Hmm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Mage Knight. We've actually finished this game, we're just going to do the scoring. Now, normally, uh, I do like a big sort of video talking about my thoughts about the game, you know, kind of like a review, but I think we all know what my thoughts on Mage Knight is, so uh, I will do a little bit of a video kind of like that. But what I'm really going to just focus on here is just quickly doing the scores to finish off the thing, talk about Dungeon Lords, and get into it. So Dungeon Lords uses the base achievement things, except it changes Great Adventurer. So Great Adventurer, you get two points for every non-fortified site, and you finish up with you know a plus three if you're the winner. But because we're playing Dungeon Lords, Dungeons and Tombs are actually plus four instead of plus two, and the winner of the Greatest Adventurer is plus five instead of plus three. Now, uh, that's about it. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing we do for scoring. Now, scoring is easy to forget about because scoring is not in the rulebook. You've got to actually go to the walkthrough to find out how to do the scoring, which is down here, right? So it's pretty, pretty easy. Basically, you just take your fame levels and uh, then apply these effects like Greatest Leader, Greatest Conqueror. So we're just going to do that right now. The first thing you need to do before you uh, can calculate your score is you've got to go through your deck and split out all the cards into your base deck and then into your action cards, artifacts, and spells. I mean, your advanced action cards, beg your pardon. Because depending on what you have, that affects your score. So we'll just do that. Normally you end up with 16 cards. This guy's got 15 cards because he's used decomposed a bunch of times. And you end up with something like this. Now also, at the end of his turn, he would have had to discard the Magic Familiar. But what he's actually going to do is actually going to spend a mana to keep that familiar because uh, we want to keep this guy. And the reason why is if we discard this guy, this guy by himself is worth two points. So the, all the units are worth their level, which is that number in the top corner, right? So he's worth two points, but the mana crystals are worth half a point each. And you can only have whole points. So we've got three crystals. That's worth one point. So it's much better to spend that crystal and keep the familiar. Right, so while I'm doing all the splitting of the decks, I'll just quickly talk about Dungeon Lords. Now, Dungeon Lords is actually one of my favorite scenarios. I play Dungeon Lords almost as much as I play Full Conquest. Uh, basically because... My playgroup mainly plays competitive Mage Knight, which is unusual, apparently, because everyone I talk to, they don't like it for some reason, but we find competitive Mage Knight extremely good. And one of the things, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, Mage Knight is a high AP intensive game, and AP as in analysis paralysis, right? And when you have four people at the table, you're all trying to maximize your turns, looking at the best options and, you know, trying to figure out how to do your hands and, you know, combine your powers. The game can really go for a long time. And we're talking hugely long sessions. Now, you know, most of my play group, we've all got kids, wives or husbands. And it's just, you know, we can't, we're not, we're not teenagers anymore. We can't sit down for like eight hour gaming sessions. It's just not feasible. So what we tend to do is go for these shorter games and the competitive scenarios are a lot shorter. Sometimes we even add in blitz just to spice the game up, give us a little bit more freedom. And what this causes is because you're only focusing on your own turn, and you can do most of your focusing during other people's turns, you're basically, it, the, the game goes lightning fast. People talk about Mage Knight as being a hugely long game, but you can get a four-player game of a competitive scenario like uh, Dungeon Lords or Druid Knights or something. You can get that done in an evening 
well in a reasonable time period, which you just can't do in co-op. Also, and this this is this isn't really a critique on the co-op, but I find that when I play co-op Mage Knight, I'm usually playing with people who don't know how to play or haven't played in a long time. And it is a sort of convoluted rule system. You can't get past that. I mean, anyone who says it's not is kidding themselves. And what that means is in a co-op scenario, you're often explaining how best to maximize your turn you're saying well you know this card does this this card does this this costs this to move here you can spend this and get into that area then you can attack it in your action and by the time you explain how everything works you've basically explained their turn you know what i mean and this can lead to co-op situations which i believe is a bad has a this game has a bad follow the leader syndrome because the game is so comp- like some games have follow the leader syndrome because they're so uh, tight mechanically, so difficult that one error can screw up everybody. So everyone's putting their input in. Games like Mage Knight have follow the leader syndrome because they're quite convoluted in the rule system. So one player usually has all the rules done, and they have to explain all the rules. And during the process of explaining those rules you've actually basically done their turn. Now, you can't play a co-op scenario, you can't play a competitive scenario with people who can't play the game. So, you know, if you're playing with people who play the game, you don't have that issue in co-op. It just seems to me that when I play Mage Knight co-op, it's usually because someone's interested in it and they want to learn. So they go, look, let's play, you know, a co-op scenario so you can teach me. And the the entire process doesn't really work for me the, um, I, they seem to like it but I just find it a little bit just slow and not interesting the only cool thing about co-op is the huge battles you can have you, so we when I do play co-op I usually play the megalopolis variant where you have ginormous cities the megalopolis variant is basically built into uh, the Lost Legion expansion with that huge army that he has. But remember, when you play competitive, you can still do cooperative assaults. You can still invite players. You can form alliances. There's nothing against that. So co-op is basically the same as competitive, except competitive just has an extra dimension. And that's the way I see it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, but that being said, Mage Knight is one of those rare games that plays pretty good in all versions. The solo is really good. The co-op version of the game played solo is what I actually play quite a lot. So I often play four-handed co-op as a solo player like I did with this Dungeon Lords. Now the other thing with Dungeon Lords is because it's competitive... There's a lot more, when you play in the real world environment, there's a lot more attacking each other and having, you know, you know, violent murdering of other players, you know, especially taking people's sights. Like in, in our game, Goldex like had all these keeps and mage towers. Now, when you play competitively, you don't really want to take them as much as possible. You, you want to burn down monasteries and things that other players can't take off you because it's often better to simply steal someone else's keep than actually go somewhere else and score points because you still get the points for the keep if you hold it to the end of the game. Plus, you remove their points, so it's a swing. And you see a lot more of that when you play in a real competitive environment. When I play competitive versions of Mage Knight multi-handed, I usually play it like a race, just who can get the most points by clearing the map. Now, the Dungeon Lords is very well designed because, and, and also Druid Knights and stuff, because there's an extra day. Okay, so you actually, we, in our version I played online, we, I didn't play the last day of the, of the event. Okay, and that last day is when a lot of the action happens in a real world game. 
because you sort of maximize your turn. You remember at the end of the end of the night, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Well, that is when you start attacking other people's keeps, pulling points off each other, knocking out other players to sort of knock them out of the last turn. And usually that conflict starts about middle of the last night because you rush out, try and get all the power from spreading across the map, and then you start to move inwards using the dungeons to slide through the map really easily because they're all connected and taking over other other people's stuff. Now, I didn't do that in this because I, I just I felt that I wanted to move on to another video, move on to another game maybe. and uh, But it's just, just take that in, in mind. So I guess if I was going to sum it up, I'm get, I just want to say that I love the Dungeon Lord scenario. I think it's a fantastic scenario. I love the way it uh, frees up movement a little. So you can really go for just big, massive cards because you've got all the dungeons connected. I love the fact that it forces you into dungeons and the dungeons are worth so much, you just got to go into them. And what that means is you actually dig through the artifact deck. Like you can play Mage Knight many, many times and still find cards in the artifact deck you haven't really used. Play Dungeon Lords a bunch of times and you suddenly have seen all the cards. It's a great way to experience the artifact deck because there's so many artifacts coming into the game through the dungeons. I just think it's a very dynamic and exciting scenario. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's enough rambling. Let's uh, get back to the scoring, shall we? Okay, so enough of that. Let's get straight into the scoring and finish up this video. So the way I like to score is I score each individual player board, which is the first three and uh, the first three in the bottom one, and then I score everything else. So I've got this little tool in this thing, so I'm just going to type in B for Baravor or Valar or however you pronounce it, and we're just doing greatest knowledge. And greatest knowledge, I'll just put this out here. Greatest knowledge is two points for every spell, one point for every advanced action card. So he has two spells and three advanced actions cards, right? Two spells and three advanced action cards, which equals four points, plus three points, which equals seven points, right? And then we have the greatest loot. So it's two points for every artifact and one point for every two crystals. So he has one artifact and three crystals. So that is one three, which equals two plus one, which equals three. Then uh, the next one is greatest leader. And in this one, you just add up the values of your units. And if the units are wounded, you half them. None of our units are units. So he has four, five, six, seven, eight points in units. And the greatest beating is just how many wounds you have. He has no wounds. So that is him done. Boom. Uh, here we go. Boom. Okay. Now, little A, little witch, she has four spells and three action cards. So she's four, three, eight plus three, which equals 11. Okay. Then for Greatest Loot, she has three artifacts and one crystal. So that is three slash one, which equals six plus zero, which equals six. And for the Greatest Leader, she has a whopping zero. And for the Greatest Beating, she has four, which is... 4 by 2, which equals 8. And I know that she is going to be the one with the greatest beating because no one else has any wounds, so she also gets plus 3 for a final score 
of 11. And this is negative 11, uh, negative 11 as well. Ooh. Oh, it doesn't fit. There we are. So that's a pretty horrendous score for the beating. We just didn't get the heal cards we needed. We we're focusing too much on the wrong thing. So she's in a bad way. Okay, Wolfhawk, on the other hand. What's he got? He, for the greatest knowledge, he has one spell and four uh, things. So that's one spell and four cards, which equals two plus four, which equals six. And this is Wolfhawk, right? And for greatest loot, we have two artifacts and three crystals. So that's two artifacts and three crystals, which equals four plus one equals five. I knew that did this wrong. So it's, uh, what was it? Four, which equals four by two, which equals eight, plus three equals minus 11. Yeah, this, I only, I, I made this tool specifically for this video to make the thing a bit easier to see. I'm gonna, I, I haven't quite figured out the best way to do it. Seems to work pretty well. But I might get rid of the need to press enter and just have it update every time you type a letter because sometimes if you forget to press enter and you start working on a different value, it clears the old one you just did. Anyway, whatever, let's keep going. What am I up to? Uh, greatest leader. Now he should get a great leader here. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the greatest leader. And he has also nothing for the beating. It's pretty cool. And finally, we have Gold X, who's almost assuredly going to win this game. For let's just give it a thing for the uh, greatest loot or greatest knowledge. He has four spells and three action cards. So that's. Four, three, which equals eight plus three, which equals 11. And for the greatest loot, he has one artifact and look at all these, this is crazy. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 points here, or 11 crystals. So he has one artifact, and 11 crystals, which equals two plus five, which equals seven. Greatest leader, he's got one, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And again, he has no wounds. So now we just work out the bonuses. So Aretha and Goldex are tied for level one. So when you're tied, uh, doesn't matter how many people are tied, if you're a tie, all the people who tie get one point, okay? So that's plus one equals 12. And this is plus one equals 12. And for the greatest loot, it is gold X. So that is plus three equals 10. And the greatest leader is Wolfhawk. So that's plus three equals 13. And that is the scores at the moment. So Wolfhawk is the greatest leader, Aretha is taking the greatest beating, and the greatest loot and the greatest knowledge. The greatest loot is Goldex, and the greatest knowledge is Tide. Now, these scores are simply added to our 
uh, score up here, right? So uh, Belvoir gets seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aruthia gets 12, that's 51, 61, 1, 2. Wolfhawk gets 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Goldex also gets 12, so that's, where is it, what are they on, 63. So that's 73, 1, 2. And then he gets three for the greatest loot. One, two, three. And Aruthi gets six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wolfhawk gets five. One, two, three, four, five. And Goldex gets another ten, takes him to eighty-five. Uh, the dwarf gets eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ruthie gets six. Uh, Ruthie gets zero. Wolfhawk gets thirteen, so that's seventy-four. One, two, three. And Golex gets five. One, two, three, four, five. And then uh, the witch gets minus eleven, so it goes all the way back to fifty-eight. Not cool. Now we're just doing the uh, greatest conquerors and stuff. Oh, it looks like this is a formatting error there. Yeah, I forgot to reduce those card values. Anyway, whatever. Like I said, I only just I literally made this score pad for this video, so <laughs> it needs testing. So the way I do scores in Mage Knight is uh, I just make it daytime so it's a bit easier to see. And then I flip this over like that. And then I score that tile. So the greatest... Uh, con oh, where's my card? Here it is. So the greatest... Uh, Conqueror is fortified sites or burnt down monasteries. And the greatest adventurer is every other type of site, including mazes and labyrinths. But remember, greatest adventurer has a special bonus for dungeons this time. So Mage Tower is a fortified site. So that's one point for that. And now we'll do this one. Blip. Okay, this is her again. This time it is a uh, dungeon. And now she does another one. This is another fortified site for her. And another dungeon. This is why she got so beaten up. Okay. This uh, doesn't have anything on it, does it? This guy has two. We've got a greatest adventurer. We've got a ruin for the dwarf, and we have a dungeon for Wolfhawk over here. We have two things for Goldex. We've got a Dungeon for Goldex, and we've got a keep for Goldex. Over here, we have a monster den for Wolfhawk. So that goes in there. And over here, we have another monster den for Wolfhawk, plus two dungeons for. Her, she really should have been burning down mon monasteries. I completely forgot that monasteries own points. How stupid of me. So Wolfhawk has another monster den. And Aretha gets another two dungeons. Okay. Over here we have a keep for Wolfhawk and a ruin for Wolfhawk. So that is a keep for Wolfhawk. 
and another ruin. So that's three slash one now. And over here we have, I'll just get these things off the map. Over here we have a maze for Wolfhawk. So that is another, that's four slash one now. Now, in the, the card, this is obviously scanned for my decks or whatever, I think, or maybe it's from uh, Tufts decks. I'm not sure, but this is the original card. So it doesn't have the mazes and stuff on it because this card was from the base set and mazes were introduced in Lost Legion, I think. So, but you count mazes and labyrinths in the greatest adventure. Okay, so what else we got? Gold X. This is Gold X side of the map. He has a keep. He also has a ruin. Then we just flip this one over. He has another ruin. So that's two slash one now. And he has another mage tower, which takes him to three. And boom. Okay, so Aretha gets another dungeon. And the dwarf gets a dungeon. And over here, more loot for gold x gold x gets a dungeon that's two slash two and he also gets two a keep and a mage town takes it to five okay and over here the dwarf gets another dungeon and finally Goldex gets another tower and a ruin. Okay, so that's the final uh, values for the conquerors, what's been conquered. So look, see, that's that, that error I was telling you about. Screwed up conqueror for Berivor. So that is, let me just have another look. Did he not get anything? Did he not conquer a single site? Okay, so he's got nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing. God, he did pretty terribly, didn't he? There's a dungeon for him. And he didn't conquer a single, a single keep or anything. So that is horribly bad. Okay, so the final scoring here is obviously, so that is six by two equals 12 plus 3 equals 15. Wolfhawk is 1 equals 1 by 2 equals 2. Aretha is uh, 2 by 2 equals 4. And Bervera is 0. Now, Greatest Adventurer it's two points as normal, but it's actually four points for a dungeon and it's plus five for the winner. So this is two plus uh, eight equals 10. Wow, this is what, 25? Yeah, four by five, what am I doing? Okay. <laughs> It's actually kind of embarrassing sometimes because I suck so badly at math. Okay, she's definitely won this. So she also gets plus five. That's 30 points. Wow. That's where all her wounds go. She didn't get all those wounds. Okay, and he is eight plus four equals 12 and gold X is six plus four equals 10. Okay, and these are the final score adjustments to get added. So 
he gets nothing for that. She gets four. One, two, three, four. Wolf Hawk gets two. One, two. And Goldex gets 15, takes him to 90, that's 105. Okay, and then Beauvoir, whatever his name is, gets 10, takes him to 76. She gets 30 now, so that's 62, 72, 82, 92. Uh, Wolfhawk gets 12, that's 79, 89, 1, 2. And Goldex gets 10, so that's 115. Bam, and that's the final scores. So I'll put a section at the bottom where I can do final scores. The cool thing about this card is that you can actually save it. So I can write in here, uh, YouTube vid. 23, 08 to 019, and I can save that in a bag and uh, keep it forever. And I've even put I've even put some bags in here if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's an empty bag dispenser here. I can call this Mage Night Scores. Yonk. And then I could just save this, save that. Mage Knight scores, bam. Okay, whatever. Point is, Goldex wins by a huge margin, as we expected. Now, for competitive play, you know, if you're playing competitively uh, with your mates, you would play a little bit differently to how I played this game. When I play competitive solo, I do it as a kind of, like almost like a race. But when you're playing competitively, you spend a lot more time taking over people's stuff. Like for example, at the end, when she was trying to figure out how to maximize her score, she'd be burning down monasteries and she probably would have come over here and just tried to take over like get into that spot there and take over these things and pull points away from each other. And that's what you do a lot of in competitive play is taking over other people's fortified sites and stuff. And what usually happens is this, this scenario actually has a, another day left. So we only played until the end of the second night, but there's actually another day. So what usually happens is when I play competitively is that we rush to take over as much as the map as possible and then midway through the the last night or just in the last day that we spend that whole day attacking each other in this very intense combat between players. It gets very brutal. It's really, really fun. But uh, that's it. That's it. Goldex takes it away. For example, like when Goldex was just sitting here creating crystals, like if I was playing competitive I would have ended the game I would have just gone well look I'm going to get like two points if I do this he's going to continue earning points I may as well just declare the game over now to stop him from generating crystals stuff like that but anyway that is that here is the final score one more time and I'll see you guys next time